Hello creeps! Andy here and today I wanted to talk about the 10 most disturbing horror books that are still enjoyable. So this is not a video of like the grossest, goriest, you know, sexually explicit books ever. These are books that for me personally are disturbing and you know hit me in a way that other books haven't but are still enjoyable in some way. I've probably talked about all these books before but here is my cohesive list for you of the 10 most disturbing books. These because they are disturbing in some ways are usually polarizing books. Some people either love them or hate them kind of things and obviously it's subjective what disturbs you so I don't know if we have the same views on disturbing things but hopefully this video helps you in some way. So let's just get started. The first book that I have selected for you is a book that I've talked about numerous times and that is The Devil All the Time by Donald Ray Pollock. I love this book. It is so messed up. It's about a boy named Alvin, Arvin, and he lives in a small town in Ohio. His mother is dying of cancer. His dad is like a tough guy, but he also creates this prayer log where he sacrifices animals and makes Alvin sit and pray for hours at a time to try to save his mother's life. It's a pretty messed up book and that's not even a portion of what happens. It's basically about the whole town. You get a variety of different characters, different perspectives in the book, and pretty much just how they all just kind of screw each other over, screw themselves over. It's a pretty disturbing book. It touches on a lot of disturbing things like murder, taking advantage of people. Did I mention murder? There's also a lot of murder. And some like alcoholism and grief and also murder. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. But I think what makes this book worth reading is that it is so extremely well written. And this, by the way, I think is the, maybe not the only one, but this isn't even a horror book. I think it might just be in the fiction section but there is enough horror in this book to, to have it be on this list. It's really fucked up, but it's so well written and the way that uh, Donald Ray Pollock kind of just like weaves this narrative and connects everything is just so impressive. And so I highly recommend this one. It is a disturbing read. They made it, oh, I have a movie verse book on this. They made a, a book about, a movie about this too. So I'll leave that linked down below as well. Yeah, check this guy out if you haven't already. A fantastic book. And I don't think anybody's going to be surprised that on my list is Brett Easton Ellis's American Psycho. This is one of my favorite horror books ever written. I think that it is a literary masterpiece. Although a lot of people tend to disagree and hate this book. It is a little bit challenging to read due to the endless descriptions of seamlessly mundane things and then also the very very in-depth details of torture and murder and all these horrible things that Patrick Bateman does. So it is, you know, fairly similar to the book in some ways. I've got to have a movie verse book on this, so I'll leave that linked down below. I also have a video where I rent every movie that Patrick Bateman rents from the video store in the book, and then I also have a video analyzing the book, so I'll leave all those down below too in case you're interested in those. But this is about Patrick Bateman and his either, depending on how you read the book, killing spree that he goes on to or his descent into madness. It just kind of depends on your interpretation of the reading. I have my own views and ideas on this, but I think that's what makes liter literature so fucking fun is that everybody can have different opinions on how they read it. And I think Brett Easton Ellis is a just one of the best writers. He's one of my favorite writers. I just love him. If you guys have watched the movie and haven't read the book, the book is, oh, I don't know, a hundred times worse <laughs> than the movie is. Like the movie's bad, the book is to a whole nother level. So it's really disturbing, but I think that the elements in it, if you pay close attention and the way that it's written is intriguing enough for it to be like a literary novel that I think is extremely genius as fucked up as that might sound, but it's true. And then this next guy here is actually a nonfiction book. This is by G.L. Davies, and this is called Haunted Horror of Haverford West. I'll leave the links to all these books down below in case you guys want to pick them up. But this is about a true story of a guy who lived in a house that was haunted. He wrote this book, published it, and then a couple reached out to him and said, I know you didn't say which house it was, but I know we lived in the same house because we had similar experiences. They ended up meeting and then he got their side of the story, what they experienced, and then turned it into this book. So this book is kind of split into two. It's his experience living in this haunted house, plus these other 
to, I, I think there are a couple that lived there. This kind of stuff freaks me out. I don't necessarily know that I believe in ghosts, but just on the off chance that this shit really, not, not saying that it didn't happen, but he even says in the back that there are other things that could um, make people think that they believe in ghosts or see ghosts or experience ghosts. And so that was really interesting to read about too. But this book freaks me out. It really did freak me out. And yeah, it's supposedly a true story. And uh, yeah, pick this up if you guys want like a real good ghost story. This was, I think, probably the only haunted type story that I've read and could not put down. Fantastic read, super creepy. And then another nonfiction we have here is The Exorcism of Annalise Michelle, and this is by Felicitas D. Goodman. This is the true story that the movie The Exorcism of Emily Rose was based on. So it's about this young girl. Um, she th This takes place in Germany, and um, it's about her horrible afflictions that she suffers starting very young and leading up to her unfortunate death when she was, I can't remember her exact age, but I think like early 20s. It's a horrific, horrific story. And kind of like that ghost story, I don't know that I believe in demons, but on the off chance that this shit's real, this is fucking creepy. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's worth reading because yes, oh my gosh, it's so freaking disturbing to see what this poor girl suffers through year after year. Like it is a horrendous, horrendous book but I also think it's important to share her story and like let her story live on and really discuss what happened to her so I think it's worth the read um this one really messed me up any sort of like exorcism stuff freaks me out even fictional movies freak me out so much so that this book isn't even on my bookshelf it resides in my closet where I cannot see it because this book messed me up I also have two videos where I go into like super crazy detail about this book because there's just so much in here. The woman who wrote this, Felicitas D. Goodman, did just like a wonderful job. She was able to meet with the family. She flew to Germany um, to like see the town that they lived in. She did interviews. She got the court reports. It is a cohesive book. So if you're interested where that story began, highly, highly recommend picking this up if you're okay not sleeping for about a week while reading it. The next book I have here, my friends, is The Terror by Dan Simmons. And I read this book last year and it just blew me away. It is so good. So it's a historical fiction about two ships. This is like the true part. The two ships that went up to the Arctic in 1845, the Erebus and Terror. And they went up to there to try to prove that there was a Northwest Passage. And the horrendous, awful things that these men had to experience on that ill-fated expedition. It's a really tough read. There are supernatural elements on top of it, but like even that stuff aside, I think the most disturbing stuff in this book were the true things that these men experienced. I think that we don't know exactly what happened, but I think we know enough to where it's safe to say that they did experience a lot of what took place in this novel. I'm not saying everything, but even like some of the characters are actual men that were on the cruise. On the cruise. Like it, like it was fucking a holiday what is wrong with me no on the ship so like the actual captain's name the actual you know first mate's name all of that and you could just get to see the awful things that they encounter you know the illness uh the scurvy the lack of food the food that's gone rotten the mutiny the frigid temperatures the the frostbite and losing limbs and getting hurt and holy shit it is wild. I read this really slow and this book stuck with me for a really long time and I, I still even sometimes in the middle of night am like, man, scurvy fucking is wild. So if you guys want a book that just will blow you away, that's an interesting blend of nonfiction but then also some fiction too, uh, yeah, highly recommend picking that guy up. These books are in no particular order either. Uh, it's just in the order that I wrote the list. Next I want to talk about a book named Pen Pal. And this is by Dathan Arbach, and this one is kind of one of those, it seems like love it or hate it type of books. It began as an online story on a forum and got turned into this book, and I absolutely loved it. And I know a lot of other people really loved it too. Some people I've read online had some issues with it, but I love this book. I think it is so entertaining and so amazing. I'm not really going to tell you what it's about. If you read the back of the book, I don't have it because my friend's borrowing it right now, but if you read the back of the book, it basically just says that it's about a man who's looking back on his life and in retrospect 
fitting pieces together of something fucked up that happened. And that's kind of all it says. And that's all I knew going into it. And I'm really glad that I didn't know anything else because this book really surprised me. And so that's all I'm going to say for you. I will say that this is less disturbing than these books in like a bloody gory sense. But um, yeah, there's still something about it that just it's more creepy than like you know, awful like some of these other books are, but I think completely worth a read. I think it's more of like on the fun side of these books. It's, a lot of these are like really heavy in nature, but that one is a little bit more, I don't even want to say lighthearted because that's kind of messed up, but it is a fun read, whereas some of these are a little bit tougher to get through. So next up, I'm going to recommend, as I've recommended multiple times in the past, Dante's Inferno. This is part of Dante's Divine Comedy, Inferno, Purgatory, and Paradise but I'm just talking about Inferno because that is where the messed up stuff happens. So basically Dante is led down the rings of hell by Virgil, his guide, and he gets to meet up with a lot of uh, people that are experiencing just like eternal torture for whatever they had done in life. It's messed up to read because some of it's like, I stole a loaf of bread and now I'm burning in the sea of sulfur. And you're like, Jesus Christ, relax Dante. But, um, and then some of it is like really messed up too, like what the people did in their real lives. It's a mixture of everything, but I think that, yeah, it's, it's a really fucking brutal story. Some people find it hard to get through. I would say that it's more on the lines of like American Psycho because it is dense with like names. So if you want to read it, I would suggest getting like a portable Dante version. So where you have the footnotes to kind of follow along and see who all these people are and how they relate and things like that. So it can be dense in that sense, but it is written as an epic poem. And then there's a, just a little line that I always read when I talk about this book. So I'd like to read that to you again. It's um, pretty messed up. It's talking about a man who was trapped in a cage with his children. And he says in, in life, but he is relaying this to Dante as he's in hell. And he says, a meager ray of sunlight found its way to the misery of our cell, and I can see myself reflected four times in their faces. I bit my hand in anguish, and my children, who thought that hunger made me bite my hand, were quick to draw it closer to me, saying, oh, father, you would make us suffer less if you would feed on us. You were the one who gave us this sad flesh. You take it from us. Then it goes on to say that the children eventually perished in the cell, and then it says, And I, by then gone blind, groped over their dead bodies. Though they were dead, two days I called their names. Then hunger proved more powerful than grief. Yikes. And that is just a taste of what you will find in Dante's Inferno. It is a pretty brutal read, but I think worth a read just for the, you know, historical implications of the novel and, and like where it came from. And obviously it's a part of, of the literary canon. So highly recommend that guy. Next up here, we have Joyce Carol Oates' Zombie. This is an interesting book because it's not one that I see people talking about a lot. And like everyone knows what American Psycho is, but I just don't know a lot of people who have read this book. And I didn't know what this book even was. I found it in my used bookstore for $2.50 and I was like, I'll give it a try. I know I like J Joyce Carol Oates and I loved this book. So it's written kind of like in journal form from the perspective of a kid named Quentin and you are just kind of like taken through his life with him. You learn that he did something disturbing but you don't really figure it out until later on and then you find that he's basically uh, trying to make sex slaves and turn them into zombies by lobotomizing them and pouring acid in their heads and um, it does seem to have some Jeffrey Dahmer associations in here and it seems like at least the horror that I've read from Joyce Carol Oates that she does oftentimes draw inspiration from real things so it seems like she took that and kind of made it into her own thing but I love this book I think it is so interesting the way that it reads it kind of makes you feel icky reading it like you've just picked up the diary of a serial killer and you're like I shouldn't be reading this like it's pretty it's it's pretty weird the way that it's written and and you only see the perspective through Quentin's eyes but you also see him say something kind of weird and people like step back a little bit and you see like his interactions with people and his like inability to connect with them it's a wild ride this book and I will always recommend this one it's kind of one that's like always in the back of my head and then the next one I have for you is Sophocles' Oedipus Rex I talk about this one really often too. I mean, this is the Oedipus cycle. I'm just going to focus on Oedipus Rex today. But to be honest, I love horror books. I love horror movies. I was raised on this stuff. And reading Greek mythology 
there is something so much disturb so much more disturbing than Greek mythology, Greek tragedies, than modern day horror books and movies. And uh, yeah, they're just messed up. So if you want some like pretty fucked up stories, honestly, just pick up a Greek tragedy and yeah, there you go. There you'll have it. Oedipus Rex is about a man who is, it is prophesied to him that his son will grow up to kill his father and marry his mother. So the dad's like, I gotta get rid of this guy. Brings him and drops him off at like a neighboring village and thinks like, okay, that's good. But it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy and Oedipus ends up growing up and killing his dad and marrying his mom. But it is just a fucked up story. There's something about Greek tragedies that just hit me in a way that modern day books don't. And so I highly recommend any Greek tragedy if you guys have access to any of them. Like yeah, look them up, read them. They're really messed up. But the Oedipus Cycle is just one that I go back to often. I think just because like the idea of that self-fulfilling prophecy of something that's so horrific like murdering your own father and marrying your own mother, like that's, that's pretty fucked up. And then the last one that I want to talk about for you, my friends, is The Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker. So uh, Clive Barker wrote this novella, The Hellbound Heart, and then it was eventually turned into the movie Hellraiser, which he wrote and directed. And I mean, Hellraiser is one of my favorite horror franchises, specifically the ones with Doug Bradley in it. So much so that this is the box that my husband proposed to me with. So you can say I'm a little obsessed with the movies, but there is something just so fucked up about this novella and you think like it's a tiny novella there's no way that Clive Barker can like push the limits any more than the movie oh it's pretty messed up there's just little lines all over this book that you're just like Clive relax are you good let me see if I could find a few for you I did a movie verse book on this but I think I'm gonna reread it and do another full video on a movie verse book because that one I had combined with other books and I think there's just so much to say with this bad boy. Even little lines like, the tongues fell to the floor like a rain of slugs. The movie is fantastic. The book is so visceral. Um, let me see if I can find like just another quick line for you. Rory's discarded face hanging from his jaw. Then he came unsewn, his limbs separated from his torso and his head from his shoulders in a welter of bone shards and heat. I mean, come on. Clive Barker is just the master of disturbing words written beautifully. Like he has such a way of using flowery language to describe like the most messed up thing that a mind can come up with. I seriously just wanna like open up his brain and crawl inside. I'm a little worried actually to do that. Maybe I wouldn't want to because there is some stuff going on out there. I love Clive Barker. I think he's one of the best horror writers of our era. Uh, so yeah, The Hellbound Heart, highly, highly recommend. It's pretty much like the movie, you know, it follows Frank and his uh, his mission to find otherworldly pleasures and then the family comes home and then Frank tricks the Cenobites. It's basically the same as the movie, but yeah, there's just something so visceral about this. I mean, what an amazing pairing The Hellbound Heart and Hellraiser make. It's fantastic. So yeah, I will do a whole new movie for first book on that for you guys. I'll do that soon um, so we can talk a little bit more about it because just adore that book. But anyways, those are the 10 most disturbing books that I have read. Please feel free to leave a list down below of the most disturbing books that you have read and I will read into them and maybe I can maybe I can make this this video like once a year or something. Let me know if you guys want me to do a disturbing video of books that like are not even enjoyable because they're so messed up. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon with another horror video. Bye guys!